Um, I'm absolutely thrilled that um, our guest has, uh, has, has agreed to come and talk to us. Um, sir, introduce yourself. Who are you? Uh, hi, guys. I'm uh, Dave Palumpo. It's good to be here. Hey. Um, for those who don't know, Dave has Crazy. recently been officially announced as the artist on Marvel Masterpieces 2020. <sighs> How you must feel about being able to talk about that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I lived with not talking about it for so long that by the time it finally got announced, uh, I was strangely like completely unprepared. Was, no. like, I don't oh, like I kind of almost even like forgot that I was getting ready to be able to like share this. And so it was just like a scramble to like, I, I didn't even say anything for a day because I was just like responding to other people saying things and oh wow so. <laughs> oh wow did Literally you kind of it over here <laughs> <laughs> every single form of electronic communication you've had suddenly blow up I, I mean it wasn't like over the top but it, it was enough of uh just kind of like reacting to this reacting to that uh that by the time I was like, I should probably write something on my social media accounts about this. And it was like dinner time, which is <laughs> usually like not a good idea for when you make a, an announcement of any kind. So it's like, I'm going to wait until tomorrow. Cause if I post something that I'm going to have people like responding and I'm going to be asleep and you yeah. Know, so. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Well, for our listeners, we should also emphasize, uh, Dave, could you talk about some of the other franchises you've worked with, some other things that we might have seen your art from? Yeah, uh, probably the longest running is is Magic, which um, I'm actually, I was working um, from about 2008 for Magic the Gathering up through pretty continuously up through about the middle of masterpieces and then i kind of went on hiatus with them uh just because it was getting to that point where i needed to be focusing all my attention on the project but um but yeah so it's like a slightly more than 10 year stretch of of uh working with wizards of the coast uh so a lot of dark horse covers usually for either the alien franchise and kind of like related like alien and predator Prometheus mm -hmm. or uh, covers for Joe Golem, which is Magnolia property, but not as far as I know. I don't think he's ever worked on any of the comics directly, but he's kind of like the I guess you'd say he's like the producer of that sure. title. Um, uh, those are super fun. It's like pulpy detective occult stuff. Oh, and, uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, if, if you haven't, if you don't know those, they're, they're cool. You'd probably dig them. Uh, yeah, I know that you're into that the, the weird horror stuff. and that kind Yeah. Of thing. I'm going to have to check that out. Cause I, I, I didn't, I don't know about that, but that's really awesome. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, those, those are like the easy ones. There's always like random other projects going on. Um, I do book covers here and there. I, I've done like a bunch of stuff for sideshows, Court of the Dead, Sideshow Collective, and um, I always try to have some personal work going on. I do uh, bits for basically like off and on uh, doing like gallery work, which is pretty different from my uh, commercial illustration. And uh, my is there anything that you're thinking of? I've, I've done a bunch of illustrated novels, uh, not that I wrote, huh? but for other people's books. No, uh, <laughs> I mean, I remember I remember seeing your stuff and I mean, I remember seeing your stuff before the Masterpieces announcement. I mean, I, I didn't know you or anything like that, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I followed your page and I remember seeing the occult stuff and the horror stuff and, you know, the yeah. sideshow piece, which I'm absolutely a huge fan of um, from Core of the Dead. And I remember seeing them. I was just like, wow, this is I had no idea about the relation or anything like that. I just knew that the yeah, art was yeah. you know, really beautiful. Um, because I like all that creepy stuff, and I remember seeing your work in MTG too. So I was going yeah. Magic the Gathering. So I was that's, like, "Oh, this is crazy!" That's like seeing the that. biggest, longest running property that I'm connected with. But I don't think of myself as being like a prominent. Like there are certain magic artists who are kind of, I think you would say, like 
the the face of the game. Oh you know, really? Like wow. yeah, like like they're um uh like Chris Braun, for example, uh tends to do a lot of the like really premier pieces and, and that kind of thing. And so like I've been with them for a long time, but I'm uh just like a support player <laughs> in, in my <laughs> mind anyway. And, kind of, uh, the way you describe it makes me think of Saturday Night Live. In a way, <laughs> yeah, a little bit, you know. yeah, I'm like one of those cast members who's who's been on for a long time, but it's like the oh that guy, yeah, okay, <laughs> he shows up in the background sometimes in Adam Sandler movies or something. Yeah, always, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the fifth Ghostbuster, that kind of thing. You're yeah, way way yeah. too modest, my friend. Way too modest. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, that's amazing, man. Yeah, because I just, you know, um, I know listeners, well, the real fun treat of it was when we this all first started, when everyone was kind of sniffing around to try to figure out who was MM2020. We went on a, a many people went on a mad dash to try to figure out whose signature that was or who saw these <laughs> images. And, and I just remember everything kind of surrounding that me and Ian being like, I wonder who it is and trying to figure out all these crazy connections uh, when the, the signature was going around and i was like no one's gonna figure this out unless they're a diehard collector of magic like signed magic cards uh because it's yeah it's indecipherable you can kind of get my initials from it you know but uh yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> so uh, how how long did it take you to to because you've did 135 pieces, I think I read, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is the same as the figure that Simone did for um, 2018. Mm -hmm. How long did that did that take you, start to finish? Uh, so I got I got contacted in June of 2018, and, and then there was a kind of a longer period than you might expect of just kind of like getting contracts in order, mm. things like that. Like, I think it was probably August that I actually started uh, okay. getting getting to functionally, like, do anything. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that carried through April of this year. So just under two years. And wow. I was a uh still doing work with other clients while that was going on and gradually taking less until probably so i took another project that i knew was a bad idea but i couldn't say no to in the fall of 2019 and that was the point where i was like nothing else comes in until this is all finished up in yeah. April. And then effectively from like January to April, I was just a hundred percent working on Marvel. So yeah, it was, it was like very much a ramping up at the beginning. And by that, by the end there, I was just like really in the rhythm and, mm. and everything was moving at like a very smooth, fast pace. Wow. Oh, that's good. Wow. That's awesome. So, you know, we, when we spoke to Jennifer Wu, she mentioned how she found uh, Simone uh, Simone Bianchi and how she found him at a con mm -hmm. and then they ended up talking. Um, so how were you kind of tapped for this? How did that story come I, along? I don't know. I was actually, because I know you guys talked to Jen uh, and I haven't heard the interview yet because you haven't released it as of this week. while we're talking right now. Mm, so yeah. I was hoping that that story <laughs> might be in there, but apparently it's not. Uh, I don't know. Um, they, she had actually written to me, uh, probably a year earlier, I want to say, or, or six months to a year prior about doing a project that had nothing to do with any of this. And I think it was something where it was like the timing of it or the, this, it might've been just like the scope of what they needed and the time that they had to get it done just was not going to work for me. And so I had to turn it down. And then the next I heard from her was an email that was like, we're going to send you an NDA. We want to talk to you about uh, a project. Or I don't remember how she worded it. It was something it might, she might have said it was for Marvel. I don't remember. But it was something where I was just kind of like, that sounds like a Marvel Masterpieces set, but that's not what it's going to be. Because why would that be something that 
they would talk to me about. Like it was, it was just kind of like, uh, okay, send me the paperwork. I would love to hear whatever this thing is going to be. And then we got on the phone after I sent in my NDA, and that was when we like had the first real kind of like conversation about details or anything. So, wow. Yeah. And, well, it makes total sense seeing the art now, of course. I mean, just amazing. <laughs> well, uh, well, it was something that, yeah, I, I didn't, um, I, I, I think that she did mention uh, the work I've done for Dark Horse as being something that they were looking at. Um, I don't remember if she mentioned magic, but that seems like it might have been relevant. Uh, but yeah, it's it's something that I was like, I I don't really have superhero experience, but I definitely am interested, you know, like that, that was something that I thought that I was going to do before I started learning how to paint. I thought I was going to draw comic books and specifically I was always a Marvel fan. So yeah, when it was just like, oh my God, I, I just kind of at a certain point figured, I don't think this is what I'm going to do, but it turns out like I'm super excited. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Yeah, it does, it does feel karma it, it kind of feels like karmically it feels like the right thing but i'm saying 100 and not you know i'm not living your life or, or you <laughs> so um but um yeah it's <laughs> i don't feel like there's yeah i don't know to me it was more of just kind of like i am really appreciative that i'm getting this opportunity mm. and i'm appreciative that i'm getting it now as opposed to at some point in the past, because I feel like I've made a lot of, um, I've learned a lot of things from prior experience on other things that I'm glad I didn't learn on this job. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Like if, if I, if I had, uh, gotten this sooner, I think I would have very <laughs> possibly not been up to the challenge or, or, uh, not done a job that I would be happy with in the end. So I felt like it came at a good time also. Yeah. Wow. How long after that conversation with Upper Deck did you ring your mum? <laughs> uh, 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 legally, she found out when you guys found out. I don't know Interesting. <laughs> okay. There we go. There we go. Very good answer. Nice. Very good answer. Good I tried. I tried. I tried, Noren. Um, <laughs> so for the set, so let so. I think I think we're ready, Ian. I think we're ready to get into this. We can't talk about everything. We can only talk about what was revealed. Um, but in terms of some of the pieces we've seen, all right, um, are there any stories with those pieces, things you were especially uh, excited about with one of the pieces or anything that fun stories that we could hear about just to get a little understanding? I wish that we could talk about everything. Um, I know because we I will, know though. we've only seen a fraction of it. So we've only seen a fraction of these like beauties. 10 percent, maybe. I guess oh, probably. Yeah, it's been it's, about like well, fourteen if, pieces released. It, if you're up for it, we'll have a no holds barred everything interview once We're the set is to. all public. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely gonna have that. to. You know, talking about the pieces and the sizes and all that kind of stuff, you know, the thing I really want to start getting in the habit of doing on the show is talking to the artists and getting and asking them, you know, you know, what are your brushes, your paints? What were your choices on the canvas sizes? You know, just to get a behind the scenes on on your time creating these pieces. Yeah, uh, I honestly like don't change that stuff up very much. Um I have like the surface that I work on, the the brushes that I work with, the palette that I put out. It's pretty much, you know, from one thing to the next, the same. Uh, the size of the piece will change, you know, depending on how it's going to be printed. Usually, like uh, if I know something like this sideshow, the pieces I did for sideshow collectibles that yeah. I knew were going to be printed as large posters. Uh, uh, those paintings were all done fairly big for me uh, because I, I know they're going to be printed big. Um, something that's going to be reduced to a trading card, you know, I, I usually would do those at 12 by 16, which is what most of these are. Some of them I did larger. Um, see if I can kind of go through those. Uh, I work on panel. I've always preferred a rigid surface. Um, I think that canvas 
looks great and has a certain interesting like way that the paint kind of blends really nicely on canvas, which is something to do with the, the texture and the bounce of it. Uh, so it, it does in some ways make it easier to work with, but I like the, the kind of uh, hard edge crispness that panel gives me. And so that tends to be more often what I work on. I almost never deviate from that. And I like to prime it with a really kind of like rough sort of texture. I don't think it's really easy to see in any of these. You'd have to really get in there and look closely but and on the originals you can see that they have like uh, ripples and pebbles in in the surface um, I think that that's something for me that just makes the like whenever I'm doing anything that has like a dry brush effect it can pull out some really interesting organic textures there that I wouldn't have been able to plan but they really look cool on the piece and also um, there's lots of cat hair just floating around my house <laughs> and you don't notice as much of it. I, and this is like half a joke, but it's really like seriously when the painting is done and you're like varnishing it and putting it in a frame and there's like hair and dust and stuff, inevitably always in any yeah. surface. So the more meticulous your surface is, the more that stuff is annoying. And I think that at some point I was just like, I'm just going to go the other way and make my surface chaotic. And then that stuff just kind of blends right in. And you, it's, it's a camera. So are you telling me that there's actual wow. cat hair on the black cat painting? Oh, oh yeah, there's. I mean, my my surface is like at least four percent cat hair. Yeah, really? it's... okay. <laughs> That's the secret sauce, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, the the brushes I work with tend to be just. Um, I, I like square tip. Uh, I have a few certain sizes that I always use, um, and um, yeah, my my color palette. It's very bright and prismatic, and if you been familiar with my work prior to the Marvel stuff. My work tends to be not very bright and prismatic. And uh, I don't know why those two things happen to be happening at the same time. But I, I work with really, I think that part of it is I did learn a lot of, um, I was going to school to learn to paint. And then close to when I was graduating, I started working on trying to get an illustration portfolio together. And that was when I went and actually like sat down and took some lessons from my mom and from Boris. And a lot of my palette, I think, is influenced by them. And and it's changed over, you know, 15 ish years. But uh, but yeah, they both have a very like prismatic you know, lots of cadmiums and things like that. And, um, and, and yeah, so, so there are certain things about my process that have changed over the years, but there's always these weird little holdovers. And I think there are the, the biggest one that's changed very little from what I learned from working with them was, was my palette choices. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Wow. So, um, I noticed a couple of them. You can see that you did them a little bit bigger, and the, um, mm -hmm. the Spider-Man um, one looks to be one of those larger ones, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken, uh, from looking at this. And that, that's absolutely astonishing. And we know that's one of two that you've done, at least, mm -hmm. um, because um, they released the image of, of uh, one of the canvas gallery cards, I believe, yeah. uses the... Yeah. the um, and that actually makes sense to me. Uh, well, obviously, Peter Parker being a photographer, but with your cameras... <laughs> in there is is as obviously in the background there yeah so, yeah so that that one that they released did you actually use the spe any specific lens of any one of your cameras yeah uh yeah i kind of almost don't want to say which one it is no that's fine that's fine i'm just curious just as, I, as long as you sell it with the painting or sell it as like an artifact item i think that's I, the most important part uh, <laughs> i i intend to keep it because i like <sighs> shooting with it but uh but i did want to <laughs> I did want it to be something that Peter Parker may have used in a right. in a kind of like sort of 60s, possibly even 70s era. He probably wouldn't have wow. used it in the 70s. I think it would have been a little out of date by then. But uh, but also like he was always on a shoestring budget. So who knows? I yeah. don't know. 
you know. See, I love that so much that you took the time to make it like contextually I mean, accurate, make it fun. See, that's what that's, matters, though. That's that's just my camera nerd, though. Like that, but I like that. That's, that's good. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> that's, we're two for, we're like, two for two at the moment. We've got yeah, we've got I, cat hair on the black cat painting, and we've got one of your actual cameras, one of your favorite cameras, in one of the Spider Man paintings. So this is this is going well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh you know you w- whenever you're working on these things you're sitting there in your room by yourself and you got to make it fun. Mm, so yeah. you know. Hundred <laughs> percent. I um there are so many pieces here that I'm I'm gob- gobsmacked by all of them quite frankly. Um, another one that really we've touched on Star Lord, but another one that stood out for me just because of how different it is to to the other ones that we've seen so far. And I think by necessity, because of the sensory nature of the character is the daredevil, mm. um, which I believe you, you put an Instagram post up and, and, and mentioned a little bit about your thinking behind that piece, but, but just, just kind of for our listeners and uh, sure. daredevil's a big, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a big daredevil fan uh, along with Spidey. So to, to tell tell us a little bit about your, your kind of thinking and your choices on that one. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to, to be really, uh, minimalist on this particular one and I tried not to do that too often with these like have just a, a figure on an actual plain flat background or anything but in this case it felt appropriate to me because uh, I wanted that that sense of like it always seems to me like when, when Daredevil's really like concentrating like that that kind of like He's he's listening for a really specific, uh, you know, he's he's like trying to find a person who's been kidnapped or trying to track the, you know, the villain who's making their getaway. And so he's like up there on the rooftop and he's he's just like filtering out everything and, and mm-hmm. really uh, trying to to just hear that one very specific sound that he's looking for. So, yeah, I wanted to have him. Uh, in in that sort of almost like gargoyle pose, you know, like perched up it. there on the yeah. corner of the roof, and uh, and and black, white, and red as a color combination, I think always is has has a really kind of like dynamic punch to it. So with the mm-hmm. red costume, you know, the idea of having him on this this you know really kind of like stark empty background uh, with the concentric rings of the sonar. Uh, felt like a way to go it was every once in a while with one of these also is one of those things where i'm like i feel certain that i've seen this like you get an idea and you're like somebody's done this right and i'm mm-hmm. sure that somebody has done this um but i couldn't find anything that looked quite like what i wanted to to do and so that's the main thing is like all these characters have been imagined and, and visualized so many times you know so as yeah, long as it's yeah. not like too much like Oh, yeah. Like I was constantly as I was sketching these, like getting on Google. And if I had an idea for something <laughs> like, wait, I, let me let me at least check all the other masterpieces versions of this character. Like, make sure, <laughs> the same make sure there's no copy specifically in the masterpiece. Yeah. 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 Well, Daredevil yeah. has that graphic as I mean, I feel, feel like for me, like Frank Miller, you know, Daredevil, uh, like there's Daredevil issues and Daredevil pieces I've seen where you always see that graphic presence, right? Because mm-hmm. Daredevil has that kind of um, graphic weight to him because his mm-hmm. silhouette so well defined that you yeah. get to have those moments. But I think, I honestly, it's one of my favorite pieces. And it didn't take until maybe like the third or fourth time I was stalking the photo where I noticed the ledge was red. Yes. I, I didn't it's catch like it. It's like he's really... made of the same material. It's yes. that gargoyle reference you just made. It's really, yeah. and, and that yes. kind of clicked as soon as you said that. I'm like... Of course, you know, that's that's I think it's just I really I really think it's a great piece. And I think and I Ian and I have talked about this privately, too, like some of the masterpiece cards and things that your mom has done as Boris has done and other, you know, masterpiece artists that our listeners will know about. I think when they vary it up and they do Mm -hmm. these kind of like quick little surprises or like, you know, two or three or four pieces like whatever, however many it is, I find it extremely refreshing. You know, and you you get that kind of, I don't know, just it's it's something that works on a big canvas and then works on a really small space, too. Yeah. That I think I, yeah, I really appreciate yeah. the piece. Really lovely. But, and that's something like uh, getting 
so many years of, of doing the magic cards really have helped wow. me kind of figure out how to create images that are going to read small because uh, those are even smaller like they're printed on a card the same size but they only get half of the card they're bored, dedicated aren't they? to the yeah. image ah. yeah because there's the t- so um yeah uh, uh um, probably in part because of working on those but at some point i got in the habit of doing my preliminaries as as small pieces usually typically i would do them around four by six inches i did prelims for these at five by seven uh for, wow. for all the pieces in the set. and um that was something i know it's gonna if it if it works at that size as a painting at that size so um when i'm you know sketching out my idea and i'm gathering my reference and putting everything together uh if i can't make it work as a little five by seven monochromatic painting something's wrong in the in the structure of it you know something needs i need to go back and uh you know rearrange my composition i need to clarify my shapes you know something is off in the value scale like if 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 it's not working at that small size, then I know it's going to be a waste of time to try and fix it in the painting. It's it's like fundamentally a flaw needs to be corrected at that point. Brilliant. That's amazing. We've seen examples of that from other people as well. For for your preliminary pieces, um, the, you said they were monochromatic. You know, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm using monochromatic a little bit loosely because you're right. They are uh, black and white on a red surface. Which, oh, cool. because black and white actually have slight color variations to them, it's all, you know, it's physical paint. <laughs> so, uh, wow. I I actually get a little bit of color and temperature variation just from the thickness of it. Also, so if I put down a really thin uh, gray on top of the red, it's going to be different. It, if I put a thick gray, it's going to be cooler. If I put a mm. thin uh it's going to have more of the red showing through so it's going to be warmer so i get a little bit of like playing with temperature and color on those i i do have a couple here to show you guys of those i can't show you many unfortunately because most of the um you know they have the uh the redemptions yeah for the for the sketches so most of the base well all of the base set pieces have um already been sent out to upper deck and most of the images that have been released are from base set cards so i only have a few here but my screen is so tiny um wow yeah so like this is this is what we're talking about with the uh the way that i can get like the gray almost comes out like the blue in spider-man's costume gotcha and then in this case i'm i'm just leaving the red like completely just untouched because the red of his costume really pops it's part of what's going to make the image work so like i said only hey, that is that's beautiful man oh, like here's a here's a star lord uh, oh and uh yeah so oh and i brought I, I i got this one out i wanted to show the process from start to finish so uh initially I'm doing something. I don't know if you can see this. I can see wow. it if, if it makes it easier. But um, this is just my pencil where I'm kind of like working out. I probably have a bunch of Venoms. Venom was a tough one for me. Oh, really? I was going to ask if there was any particular character that we've seen that was a, was a challenge. So, there, uh, yeah, uh, there's there's one that was like really hard and I can't explain why and it's a character I ended up having to do several times but they haven't shown any pictures yet. So of course, yeah. Didn't talk Silver about that, Surfer, but... right? Got it. Yeah. So I'm just kidding. Bad joke. I'm sorry. Not, not <laughs> sorry. try. Not try. <laughs> I was just getting in that in there. Got it. <laughs> it, it might be in a different book. Some sometimes I would be like working on. So it might have been that I was working on Venom and just not happy with what I was coming up with. And I was like, all right, well, I've got 134 other characters to work on here. So <laughs> I'm going to give Venom a break and uh, come back later. And and then, like, yeah, I think that that was what happened here because 
I'm not seeing them in this book. But in any case, um, after a bunch of like not good venoms, uh, end up with with the one that I decided to go with on this yeah. piece, and then uh, from that that point, I actually sent that into Samantha, who was my art director, um, and I would send her like because I knew there's gonna get there's there's gonna be time that gets eaten up in the approvals process. Yeah. And with this many pieces, I wasn't sure how that was going to affect my schedule. Like, you know, it's like, I know I can get this work done, uh, but if it takes like a month to get feedback or whatever, that, that could run into problems as far right. as like me just sitting on my hands waiting for something to do. So I wanted to, which it turned out to really not be the case. Like they were very quick with feedback. But oh, wow. um, I wanted to always have uh, multiple stages in process at the same time. Sure. So I would I would do a whole uh, group of these pencils, like the one I was just showing you, and send those in to Samantha. And then um, she would give me notes based on those. Most of the time, it was just like, that looks great. Gone ahead. Every once in a while, there was a thing like, oh, you... Uh, there's like certain rules like you guys are probably familiar with some of the things that cannot be shown on a card yeah. you know that yeah uh, and and I got those up front but it turned out there were always like one or two other things where they're like oh that's not really like a rule but maybe don't do that like it's kind of yeah so uh so so like she would kind of catch things like that at that stage and then I would um shoot models uh shoot photos you mentioned pat king being mm -hmm. wolverine um and there were a number of other people that i was working with on these uh bring models into the studio and shoot a bunch and something else because i knew that i was going to be doing so many of these pieces that helped me be really efficient was if i could get a bunch of the uh, uh rough concepts worked out ahead of time you know, I could bring Pat in and I could shoot like photos for nine different cards uh, all in one session, which mm. ordinarily like the kind of work that I'm doing, I'll bring a model in and we'll shoot for like one thing. You right. know, uh, so it was it was great. And honestly, like really, uh, I lucked out that I had decided to just close out all of my model shoots before COVID hit. Uh, oh. So at that point, like I already had all the reference I needed to to carry me through. Wow. Um, but because uh, that would have made it a challenge. Um, but yeah, and then at that point, that's when I do the the little uh, studies, which is, oh. this is what goes then for for approval so that I can get started in the final. And um, yeah, Samantha takes this, passes it along to whoever she's talking to at Marvel, which again, it's like anything that is, is not me talking to Samantha is like behind an opaque wall. And I don't know what's <laughs> going on. Uh, and then she comes back with whatever notes, if they have any notes for me on those, I think there were only a couple that I had to repaint. Um, most of the time, if there were notes, they were something that was like, this is good to go just keep in mind whatever you know like yeah there's a costume detail here that it looks like might not be quite right or, or something mm -hmm. like that um yeah there were one or two where there was something that they just felt was like tonally not what they wanted to see for that character and then this is one of the big ones i don't know if... <gasps> and and yeah. then, just the final <laughs> wow look at that man I uh, love seeing the lights on in the building. What a uh, great thanks, thanks. Yeah, and so then this is most of them are not that big. Uh, that was something that I did for characters that were either pieces that I was really excited about or a character that was like a particularly like like Spider Man or Wolverine or something. Yeah. So this is more you can see. Wow. Like, oh, gotcha. The you know, it's in scale between the two. Wow. But, wow. Uh, it's about half the size. Yeah. The, the, the bulk of them. that taskmaster man including vision iron man and cap in there 
Absolutely <laughs> amazing. Thanks. What a great shot. It's just um, I can't talk, which is not good for a podcast, but so, I'm just slightly yeah. speechless. Also, I'm just taking in that Taskmaster again because obviously we've only seen the um, image of it released as the canvas gallery. And when you look at that, the, 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 the lettering on it actually covers most of that bottom sort yeah. of 20% of the card. So seeing that clean image there, there's a lot of detail that I just missed. Yeah, um, I, think that, I think that I have that one up on my... Do I have that on you, you might do to be fair um i'm just yeah on the but, shoulder but no yeah. i mean you're you absolutely right i i don't have uh i don't have the original on hand of this one but this the spider-man through the lens um that's another one where the canvas gallery kind of like i think the the lens effect still comes through very clearly absolutely but, very but clearly it definitely yeah. to me like feels like seeing it with no uh gra- how did I? How did I see the thing? Is, this this is what I like about about almost all of the masterpieces works from all the different artists. Is every time I look at them, and some of them I've looked at for for decades. You know, um, this is maybe the third time I've looked at this Taskmaster one. And you're right, I have found the the painting image that that was on your your site. Now, I don't know why, but I didn't notice who the characters were at the bottom until this very moment. Because I, I'm drawn focus to him. I've just been yeah, studying sure. him, and and it's I I think I kind of wanted them to be a second read because it's not a versus card. You know, it's yeah. it's not wow. Taskmaster versus the Avengers. It was just kind of a supporting detail to to the story, but the story is him. So yes, yes, for sure. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming thank on. You thank so you much. so much, um, Dave. You know, there's there's only two two more words left to say on this podcast. You know how we uh, how we end our show. So I, we. I think I'm, I think I'm going to nail it. Enjoy I think you're going to nail it. Oh, Go I spoke it. over it. Say it again. You spoke over it. Say it again. Say it again. Enjoy collecting. Yes. yes. Boom. Awesome. Lovely stuff. Thank you. <laughs>